When it comes to horror, a satisfying ending can be particularly challenging, be it because of a cheap jump scare, nonsensical finale, or even mediocre attempts at viral marketing, these horror flicks all left audiences feeling disappointed. The Descent is an excellent horror film about a group of friends who get lost during a caving expedition. While the premise is relatively simple, the film stands out thanks to its claustrophobic and hopeless approach, mixed in with thoughtful character dynamics and exchanges. Additionally, as it goes on, the film turns into a suspenseful, action-packed experience when it becomes apparent that bloodthirsty cave crawlers are hunting the group. While the characters, story, creepy atmosphere, and even lighting are all masterfully executed, the film suffers from a less-than-stellar conclusion, at least in the American release. You see, The Descent has two separate endings, with audiences in the UK seeing a whole different one, or at least an extended one. In the American cut, the main character, Sarah, seemingly escapes from the cave and drives off. She pulls over to vomit out the window, and as she leans back into her seat, there's a jump scare involving Juno, one of the deceased women. This is where the version ends. But it isn't the descent's true close. In the UK cut, the jump scare wakes Sarah, who never actually escaped from the cave. As the cave crawlers presumably close in around her, she envisions a birthday scene with her deceased daughter. The film cuts to black, hinting at her death. Apparently, it was just too dark for American audiences. Directed by M. Night Shyamalan, The Happening is a thriller about a group of survivors trying to make it through an apocalyptic disaster. However, like many of Shyamalan's films, it suffers from a strange twist and left viewers both confused and disappointed. In Central Park, people begin to kill themselves en masse, causing a panic about a bioterrorist attack. As the death spread across large swaths of the United States, Elliot Moore, a high school science teacher, travels with his wife and his best friend. Eventually, they figure out that the deaths are being caused by plants releasing a chemical into the air that targets humans. Hello? My name is Elliot Moore. Just going to talk in a very positive manner. Ultimately, though, the effects of the plants pass without killing everyone. At the end of the film, it is revealed that the plants only affected the northeastern United States and that another set of deaths has begun in Paris. What makes the happening less than stellar is the weird turn that the film takes after it is revealed that the plants are killing people. As it turns out, the plants randomly decide not to kill the protagonist. There isn't a specific reason why he is spared, which makes the story lack any real meaning or consequence. Days after Isabella Rossi's mother killed two priests and a nun during an exorcism, her father died as well. Ever since the incident, Isabella has wanted to learn more about the exorcism. To fully grasp the religious ritual, she travels to Rome to visit the Vatican School for Exorcism and to accompany two priests as they perform a series of unsanctioned rituals. However, things get dicey when the demons start to target Isabella and the priests. Bella. She said my name. The Devil Inside was created on a shoestring budget of just $1 million, and it definitely feels unpolished as a result. The film is presented in a found footage mockumentary style that purports to show real exorcisms. Everything about the demonic possession looks fake, except for one scene featuring a professional contortionist. Though the film isn't perfect, its faults could probably be forgiven if not for the terrible ending. As the story comes to a halt, there is a car crash, and then everything just cuts to black. A card then flashes on the screen, imploring viewers to visit a website to help continue the investigation into this case. In the end, the film neither ties up things neatly nor leaves you with intriguing questions to ponder. Instead, it prompts the viewer to continue the storyline, posing as a work of non-fiction. This marketing approach did not go over well among audiences. As a result, The Devil Inside has become infamous in horror circles for its uniquely terrible ending. In Sinister, Ellison Oswald moves into a new home with his wife and two children. Unknown to his wife, their new home was once a crime scene where a family was brutally killed in the backyard. Being a true crime writer, Ellison begins investigating the case as an inspiration for his upcoming book. As Ellison digs deeper and deeper, he learns that there is something more sinister afoot, and that the crime is linked to a supernatural creature. Spooked by the eerie occurrences surrounding the murders, Ellison moves his family back to their previous home. Seemingly in the clear, he decides to put the case behind him and move on with his life. But after a deputy calls to warn him about his family being in danger, Ellison is killed by his possessed daughter, who is then taken by the demonic being Bagul. The ending feels cheesy and uninspired, and there isn't much build-up to the conclusion, so it comes across as rushed. Even more in insulting than its pacing as the final shot. Like so many other cheaply done horror flicks, the end features a jump scare of Bagul to try and provoke a last-minute thrill. Unfriended follows Blair, a teenager hanging out with her friends over video chat. It isn't long before they notice a stranger going by Billy227 entering their chat. 
Confused, the group tries to uncover the anonymous person's identity. In response, Billy227 threatens to expose private information about each of them. Eventually, Blair discovers the stranger is actually the ghost of Laura Barnes, a high school student who killed herself after an embarrassing viral video was uploaded online. The film finds Blair interacting with the rest of the cast over instant message and video chat as each of them is driven to kill themselves one by one. Eventually, she's the only one left alive to face Laura's ghost. In the end, Laura reveals to all of Blair's Facebook friends that Blair was the one who uploaded the video that caused Laura to kill herself. I'm sorry. How exactly does the film end? Well, if we look at how every other character died, the best assumption would be that Blair would also die by her own hand. However, the film deviates from this pattern by having the ghost of Laura attack Blair from behind her laptop for a last-minute jump scare. Not only is it a cheap move derivative of so many other horror movies, it breaks Unfriended's otherwise clever gimmick of taking place entirely on a computer screen. The events of Mama kick off at the beginning of the 2008 financial crisis. That's when Jeffrey Dessange kills his co-workers and his wife, then takes his two daughters, Victoria and Lily, out of the house and drives them down an icy mountain road. Driving too fast, he goes over a cliff, and the three then trek to an abandoned cabin, where he is killed by a paranormal creature. Five years later, the girls are rescued and sent to live with their father's twin brother, Luke and his girlfriend Annabelle. Now feral and suffering from years of isolation, the girls are difficult to care for and refer to someone called Mama. Though Mama Mama is initially brushed off as a coping mechanism created by the girls, it quickly becomes apparent that Mama is very real. More chilling is that she intends to keep the girls all to herself. Annabelle and Luke confront Mama, who has taken the girls to a cliff where she had killed herself and her infant child a century prior. In a hilarious twist, Victoria simply tells Mama she doesn't want to go with her. Goodbye, Mama. Shockingly, the evil spirit kindly heeds her request. In the end, Mama takes a willing Lily and the movie ends. It seems like the children could have just told Mama to go away and that would have been the end of it. Additionally, the ending scene utilizes a prominent blue filter and unconvincing CGI that helps the showdown not only feel terrible, but look terrible as well. In this French slasher, two friends, Marie and Alex, find themselves hunted by a vicious serial killer who breaks into Alex's family home in the middle of the night. He kills off Alex's family one by one and eventually captures Alex, forcing Marie to save her. Though high tension may seem on the surface like nothing more than an average slasher, what really makes it stand out is its outlandish twist ending. By the end of the film, we learn that the big burly killer that has been pursuing Marie and Alex throughout the film was actually a personality invented by Marie. So in actuality, Marie was the killer the entire time, despite this being impossible based on what the film had shown previously. When Marie is revealed to be the actual killer, the entire logic of the film crumbles apart, resulting in massive plot holes that are impossible to ignore upon a second viewing. While the premise could have worked if executed with a more careful focus on perspective, the final product has an end that feels lazily tacked on to create a cheap twist under the guise of something psychologically sophisticated. M. Night Shyamalan's The Village is a sort of period piece about a rural town surrounded by dangerous creatures. The film hints that the unstable peace between the village and the red-robed dwellers in the woods will soon come to an end when a group of young people must venture into the trees. Despite the protruding spikes, the long claws, and the grotesquely inhuman grunts that these creatures make, it is later revealed that these creatures are really just villagers trying to scare the young residents into never leaving the village. While this may seem like a silly twist, the real twist is much harder to swallow. After a blind girl manages to make it through the woods, she encounters a man who can help her find medicines needed to aid the village. Unbeknownst to her, he's actually a park ranger who spotted her while driving his car. It's revealed the village actually exists in the modern day. The children have been excluded from all forms of modern life simply because the adults wanted to get away from the troubles of the world. What was the purpose of our leaving? Let us not forget it was out of hope of something good and right. Adapted from the 1998 Japanese horror film of the same name, 2002's The Ring saw a fair amount of success among American filmmakers. The haunting Samara and her cursed VHS tape certainly left an impression among audiences, and even resulted in a sequel in 2005, though it performed poorly compared to its predecessor. After The Ring 2, the series seemingly disappeared, with no plans for another film. However, in 2017, Rings was released, bringing Samara back to the center stage. Similar to The Ring, Rings follows a girl named Julia, who's exposed to a curse video that will result in her death unless she figures out how to lift the curse. While the entirety of the film is contrived and filled with questionable cinematic and narrative choices, the ending is absolutely baffling. 
By the end of Rings, Julia is seemingly in the clear, after dispelling the evil spirit. However, in typical horror fashion, not everything is as it seems. Julia begins to suffer from strange occurrences. She coughs up hair, and it ultimately culminates in Samara sending a digital copy of the cursed video to everyone on Julia's contact list. In the end, the cursed video goes viral, despite looking like spam that most people would ignore. In a matter of minutes, any progress made by Julia is unraveled, and the video spreads to the rest of the world. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.